Are you looking for affordable office space in Marion? The Professional Building, located at 685 Delaware Avenue, is the place for you. For more information, call 740-383-6803. Office space is now available. Again, telephone number 740-383-6803. And today I'm joined by a dear friend, many time guest of this program, yes. and media sensation. You've yes. heard the voice already. He's the man with the golden voice, Ted Williams, and we like to check in with him from time to time and see what's new. Ted, so great to have you back on the program. Hey, it's great to be here, Scott. Fifteen days away from the actual Christmas Day. And you know, January 4th uh, of this year, the new coming year, 2013, will be two years. And I'm going to catch you up to date with closing the year of 2012. My most recent project, Scott, and I love you for allowing me to come here and, uh, 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 you know, partake of anything you want to do. Scott, I'm your cat. Oh. Bottom line, that's from the hood. I love this. That's I from love the hood. this. This is called Heart and Soul, and pretty much it's a, a documentary that will air on uh, um, uh, HBO at a date to be determined, and believe me, you'll be the first one to hit some links and, and get some. Uh, I'll give you the trailer, as a matter of fact. But uh, it'll, it'll air, and, and it deals with mental health and, and the wellness and how a lot of people don't address. You know, I would always say that from time to time I even got to a po point where I thought everybody in the world possessed some sort of bipolar tendencies. I've always said that, you know. Some people hell hold it well. As a matter of fact, I was looking at Inside the Actor's Studio with Robin Williams, and he said they, uh, that, that um, what makes him uh, uh, the person that he is and he said he's legally insane. I, I like that, and yeah. that's probably true of a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, he's legally insane. So, uh, to get up, and he, he started doing James Lipton. He was showing James Lipton how he is always uh, uh, very thought-provoking, provocative. He does the things that nobody else wants to do. And that's a tendency of bipolar. <laughs> well, you know, I, it's probably... So we don't know what Robin Williams has to take to keep us a sane portion <laughs> of his life. But... That's the whole thing. It's, it's, it's getting people to get some uh, awareness out there that a lot of people should address. And you said earlier, the holiday seasons, there's a lot of people that are depressed. Uh, you know, a lot of addicts and alcoholics, these are very poor times for them uh, during the holidays and when they did most of their drinking, you know. But now every day is a holiday. But, um, yeah, the, the mental health is very important to a person's uh, you know, success. Well, and obviously with this, Ted, you've addressed your... Uh, uh, mental, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to call it mental, but it's, it's issues that everybody has. Yeah, I, I'm one of those people, and, and you know, uh, they would like to say it's ADHD or, you know, whatever that is, you know, but uh, they would like to say that um, I, I don't stay on one thought very long, you know, so I need something to bring me in the moment. I'm always thinking about what happened last week, what's going to happen next week, and just living each day at, at fast forward, and uh, I have to get something, and, and it's called Wellbutrin, and I take Depakote, which is a, a mood-altering substance to allow me to stay in the moment. You know, Ted, every time... And uh, I smell the roses along the way instead of just running by it along. Yeah. yeah. You know, Ted, somebody, uh, uh, every time anybody brings your name up to me, they always ask the same thing. There's two questions. Sure. And I'm sure you get them. Okay. And one is, is, he, is, he? is he still clean and sober? Sure. So do you want to answer that? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you know what? It's going to be funny. Now, I think I made mention one time before that uh, Dr. Phil was like uh, uh, wanted a very much of exclusive at our two-year uh, two stint. And uh, I was going to actually do a urine analysis test live on the show, you know, uh, uh, to let America see that I'm, you know, clean and sober. Are you going to do that? Yeah. And that'll be coming uh, up? Uh, uh, the 4th. Uh, we don't know whether it's going to be actually taped on the 4th or not. But uh, they will film before the 4th to do it so that it could possibly air on the 4th, which would be the second anniversary of my divine thank you, Jesus blessing. And you will pass it with flying colors. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, That's yeah. great. I would love to do it for you right now, you know, <laughs> but the money ain't good enough. No. <laughs> well, Ted, I'm just teasing. No, 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 Ted, Ted, that's the other question I get from people is, is scale. he working? Is he working? Oh, yes, 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 I'm working. Uh, right now, Scott, I think I made mention briefly about uh, um, doing your holiday special. <laughs> yeah, which was fun. Uh, uh, yeah, it was fun. Great. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going out here giving away socks. Now, 
my Ted Williams project is doing really well. Uh, we had a couple uh, heads roll, and then now we've got everything restructured. Brett Adams is still my attorney, let it be said. And, uh, you know, the blessing has no embarrassment at it, uh, on it at all. Uh, I've been doing a lot of talk team at radio.com. That's an Internet radio station that a lot of people get live streams on. I've done a couple shows last week and so forth. So my bills are being somewhat met, and, uh, you know, I'm just blessed, man, uh, to have my home another year under with a tree and my kids calling me Pawpaw saying, I want this, I want that, you know. I'm making those those commitments a little more forefront during the holiday season. But I'm going out here, and I'm giving away socks. I can't tell you, Scott, and I'm going to say it again, how much a good, clean pair of brand-new socks feels on a person in need, especially for the 15 years that I was out there. I used to steal socks then. You know, I'd go out to the truck stop, tear the package open, throw in a couple pairs, and, you know, roll out. They got so bad that they actually put uh, crime devices on them. Mm. Now, now, you know time is bad when... When you uh, when, when they got uh, all kind of alarms and stuff on just some regular footies. <laughs> well, you know, Ted, that's an interesting question. Of oh, the Lord, they're going to be rewinding tapes. <laughs> no, Did he no, do no, it here? No, 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 no. Statue of limitations yeah. is going on. <laughs> uh, in the last yeah. two years, Ted, if, if the great event that no happened... No warning, and I'm sober. That if, uh-huh. if, 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 if the event hadn't happened two years ago that happened, where would you be today? Um, good question. Uh, I... I <laughs> I would still be on that corner t- uh, talking to God. Mm. I mean, if I had to say something, yeah, I would still be on that corner talking to God. Getting closer, I might add, because some of my reverence has been not slipping. I'm not backsliding or anything of that nature. Uh, like I said, there's no embarrassments, none. I just stay to myself and have a great time with my girlfriend and, and, and uh, kicking it with my kids over the phone and listening to my accountant telling me, you don't have very much money to spend this <laughs> week. Well, Ted, you know, you, you've talked about this a couple times on the show. Yeah. You've said that, you know, I know there was a big dispute when your book came out yeah. over some finances. Exactly. And there have been problems along the way. Where do we stand today? Well, you know, I have a lawsuit coming up, and I'm not going to speak any more about it, but I do have an upcoming lawsuit, and I have a couple uh, situations where I'm going to be uh, set back. My, my, my income taxes have all been paid properly. Um, I dr- I'm addressing my child support issues, my mental health issues, and uh, sobriety overall, that's first and foremost, but I'm keeping the main communication line open with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You that s- is first and foremost. You say there have been tiny little backslides in that relationship, or I, I think you said that a few minutes ago. What what has happened? Is it, is it just hard some days to be with it? A lot of times uh, situations don't allow me uh, to personally pursue things because I'm, I'm under certain gag orders or certain contractual uh, differences and so forth. So I'm not really out there to really promote myself. In, uh, what I can say is that I'm, pr- I, I'm representing Kraft Macaroni and Cheese and Penguin Publishing, you know, the people over at Gotham Books. Um, that's what my primary reason to be, period, is to make sure that in a positive way, I can represent those two entities in my life that could possibly provide me to take care of my kids for at least the next few years. And I I don't want to get into the gag orders or anything because obviously you can't and we don't want to get into that. But if uh, people do think that when you hit this celebrity that you hit, which was, my goodness, worldwide, all over the place. I forget what the hits were on that video. Well, listen, let me me just say this. There's a lot of people uh, that the same things are being said with this 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 uh, uh, divine blessing, as I always refer to it as, this, uh, a lot of people have said the same things that they said to me when I was homeless for 17 years. I used to have people come up to me and said, "If I had your voice, I'd be a millionaire." And my 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 uh, uh, response to that was, "Well, that's why I'm Ted Williams, and you're not." Okay. And now those same things are being said now that people think with this opportunity given me, this second chance, this this uh, redemption you know, all of salvation and all of this, that uh, the same things are being said, Ted, if I had your voice, I'd be a millionaire. Or they assume, people do assume, that I'm wealthy, wealthy, wealthy. I can't tell you, Scott, and I think I have already, and I'll just say it for the record, uh, I've settled over $175,000 worth of uh, uh, lawsuits and so forth, you know, uh, legal fees and lawsuits. And it was because of redirecting the uh, initial 
contracts that I signed under all types of stress, I might add, uh, I had to pay a lot of money to get that turned around, let alone the people who felt like they were duped out of their share of the pie that I wrongfully signed, I guess I could say, that a person such as Brett Adams' caliber redirected that to where I wouldn't be in this 18 months of fame back on the highway of I-71 in Hudson. If Brett Adams, Adams hadn't come in and the people who were managing you in the start of this were still there, where would you be today? Would you have ended back up, do you think? Or that's a little that's a little uh, uh, up for grabs. I understand. I, understand. I, I, I don't. I put it to you this way. I don't think I would have the response of people that I have on an everyday basis right now. Had it, you know, I, I wouldn't get the adulation. I wouldn't get the uh, well wishes. The the uh, uh, I love you. You know, you're this. You're that. And, and I love them as well. People really now look forward to meeting me, like the Ted Williams sighting. You know, yeah. I want a hug. I want to hear what he has to say. I want to. You know, and it's so fun. I'm I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm an ambassador uh, uh, in my own right. Now, it's nothing that I'm going egotistically or not. And I know I could make a lot more money and, 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 and some of the things that uh, are coming up, you know. But I have to take everything slowly because it's so easy just to be back on zero. I don't have the, uh, let's just say I don't have the experience to juggle finances and contracts and agents and lawyers and, 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 and the managers. Uh, I'm in that in in that point where I could be, but it's just too many numbers right now for a homeless man of of 17 years to try to get it all together in two years and be, you know, walking down the red carpet because I just did three movie. Uh, I do have a movie role coming up. It's really? A, it, it's a cameo role, and uh, I, it's it's being negotiated. I will say I won't say the movie or the or the producer or directors or whatever, but it's a cameo role. Me and my Oh, and on with the jacket and all. I love it. It's going to be a classic. It. 17 years as a homeless person uh, in your 50 some odd years of life. Now, do you still feel like a homeless person? Well, you know, I just now got the meeting like where, where, where someone has just recently said that's not homeless. It's not who you are. It's what you are. Um, yes, in my home, I sometimes feel homeless. Why is that? Thank you, Dr. Uh, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's my prescription? <laughs> um, I think I've, I think I've, uh, I've always felt that way anyway. I've, I, I've either had that feeling or like, you know how you can be in a crowded room and still be lonely? You know, I'm an only child. You have to remember that. And um, I had to entertain myself. Robin Williams uh, said it all yesterday as well in, in the Inside Actor Studio with uh, James Lipton. He also said it well when he said, I had to entertain myself, I had to play with myself, and yes, I mean play with myself, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. I, I said that to say this, that uh, I feel homeless because I can't go, and um, let's just say hypothetically, hypothetically speaking, that I, I can't go to meet a friend who happens to drink and be as not be associated with the bar, the contents and all, and, and, and this is the only place I can meet him to say, what's going on you know I can invite him out there'd be somebody riding down the street with some lucky camera is that him outside the bar mm. that damn show he is yeah. so I, I I feel whole I, I feel like God I, you know I, I'd rather be just I'd rather have a few days like I wasn't nobody mm -hmm. uh Somebody asked me this on the internet. Where do oh, you see that's yourself? Real deep one. I, I really let it out. That was personally. good. That was good. No, that was that. I love it's you. heartfelt. It's heartfelt. Yeah. Uh, five years from now, where do you see yourself? Well, like I told you, I'm st I'm going two years at a time. <laughs> <laughs> two years from today. Yeah. Two years from today. Because always everybody always asks you what's your short term goal, what's your long term goal, where do you see yourself in two years, five years, whatever. Let me do it the two years. I think I was just telling you I want to really, really get the back end of my book. I really would like to get into a book tour, uh, to where maybe. By my third year, I'll be clear of taxes, child support. I'll have an Escalade. Um, I won't be living where I'm living, you know, and I'll have my own production company. Or I'll have an agent that'll be fielding these opportunities and these auditions and so forth because that's where I'd like to. So I would like to say by my third year, which will not be the fourth of 2013. Come on in, Bob. <laughs> yeah, we're just yeah. We'll be done one minute. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. You never know what's going to happen around Scott Steers. <laughs> Always in for a surprise. But anyway, uh, two-year goal, I'd like to see myself um, with at least uh, $25,000 in, a, in, in a, a savings account. 
I'd like to have a paid for uh, uh, Escalade. I'd like to have my girlfriend already into her social security and have all of her medications and everything that she needs for the next two years because she doesn't receive any type of government assistance or anything. I myself am a veteran of the United States Army. We and, uh, so I have that. I have that. Uh, Ted, what is the worst part of the last two years? What's the best part? Worst part of the last two years? Uh, letting people... Uh, Use me. Uh, well, no, 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 I take that back. Not use me. Letting people live on my coattails that don't really need to be there. And I'm not, I'm not talking about Eric or, or anyone else. Eric is my dear friend, and let it be said for the record, that's my dude to the casket drops. Okay, let that be said. I've been knowing that man for well over 25 years, whatever. So if people feel like, um, you know, anybody around me is getting a free ride, there's nothing of that nature, but there have been. So I think I, I, I would say the worst part of the two years is uh, turning the other cheek as many times as I did. Best part of the last two years? Matt Lauer. Uh, I know. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Matt still, Lauer. Still, uh, <laughs> I got, I got, oh, let me get out of here. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm leaving. I, I got three questions. Right. I just want you to finish these, finish oh these sentences. Oh, Lord, nothing. Finish it. Uh, the, uh, we know that Matt Lauer is the best person you've met in the yeah. last year. <laughs> but uh, we, we've never talked about this on camera. Your thoughts on Dr. Phil, just personally. We've never done it on camera. Great guy. Oh. Great guy. Great guy. Okay. Great guy. If I could have done it different, I would have. Went on only one Dr. Phil show. <laughs> you know, a, lot, a lot of people ask the question, did, did you really have to go be stretched out over a period of the book? Well, did you yeah. really know... No. If your family was coming that day. No, no, okay. no, 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 And when you showed up, what did you think? Uh, well, what, is this Jerry Springer or is this, yeah. uh, you know, Morton Downey? Uh, what was the one guy, the Downey guy, uh, Morton Downey? I wasn't remember, it? yeah. Yeah, Morton no. Downey or, or Geraldo or something. Today I am. Ted Williams and you're not. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> Uh, Chevy Chase, I am. Uh, yes, yes, I've adopted it, and believe me, my family, you know, it's, Paul, Paul, you're Ted Williams, and I'm not. Remember I told you, you uh, my, my grandchildren, uh, he always asked me a question, I never answer it directly, I always go around. Say that one more time, please. Today I am. Trying to live my life one day at a time. Final question, Ted, and I, uh, this may be a hard one to come outside of yourself for this, but because of being found on that corner, because of being dubbed this golden voice, which, by the way, I don't know if I've ever asked you this, do you like that moniker, golden voice? Yeah. You do like that? Okay. Yeah. Aside from, you, you became the golden voice, you were dragged to NCI and Dr. Phil and Today's Show so and I all these things. I lost my thought. I am. I'm still on I am. It's a, it's a deep question. Yeah. So you, you've done all these things, Ted Williams wrote a book. Ted Williams has been on Dr. Phil. Ted Williams yes. is going to go back. In your mind, if you can step outside of yourself, who's Ted Williams, that, that guy on television, that voice, that radio guy, who is that? Boy, you, Scott Spears, leave it up to him, ladies and gentlemen. Um, a giving soul, very giving soul. And it's probably one of the least known facts of of me, uh, you know, I I want to be, I want to be behind the giving, giving, giving. Is I, I'm he a giving soul. I love to give. Is he is he a superstar? Is he a celebrity? Maybe that's why God gave it to me. I love to give. Go ahead. Is, is he a superstar? Is he a celebrity? Is he intimidated by? He's the man with the golden voice. Right. I mean, come on, Scott. This voice, could, I could play. It's an instrument. I can just move it the way I'd like to, gesticulate the way I'd like to, and. We're getting ready to close this. We are. If, if the voice ever went away, what would you do? Oh, well, listen, let me tell you something. This voice here, my alter ego, is always prepared to give my uh, grandchildren some stories about it. You know, I'd love to say to them, come here, kids. Come here. Come here, sweetheart. Come here. I used to be the golden voice, and I'm going to tell you something. I want you to know this. I'm not using one of those, you know, those gadgets that you use up there, but smoking will do this to you. There's no way you can sit up and tell me that I shouldn't be talking to you as the golden voice, son. Smoking will make you like this. So if I see you with a damn cigarette in your hand, I'm just going to knock it out and put it out in your forehead. 
Thank that, you very much. Is that a big regret of yours, smoking? Yes. Okay. Yes. Y- you going to try to give it up? That's that's yes. That's my new goal of, of 2013. If I have resolution. Oh, God, I hope he does. I'm telling you because this is a bad travesty in front of us. If this boy loses his voice and only can tell people that he was the old golden voice guy, oh, they're not going to believe him. They're not.